everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to be able to talk to you about Clifton Johnson. He's one of Hadley's greats. He was born in 1865, right at Civil War time, and lived in the southern part of Hadley in Hockenham. He grew up on the family farm. He was an eighth generation of his family to live in the neighborhood. He had a lot of neighbors nearby who were extended family, as well as other families that had been in Hockenham for generations. So he grew up in Hockenham, and he went to the Hockenham Schoolhouse, and then he went to Hopkins Academy when he got older. Um, he didn't graduate from Hopkins Academy. When he was 15, he left school to help earn money to pay the mortgage for the family farm. He went over to Northampton and found a job at the bookstore over there and also found a place to live that was too far to commute in those days. And he was in Northampton for five years working at the bookstore. When he wasn't working at the bookstore, he would often go to the Forbes Library there. And he said at the end of his five years, he felt he had a college education. He had learned so much at his time at the Forbes. And another good thing that happened is um, one of the frequent customers, a uh, known engraver, Elbridge Kingsley, had um, seen some of his doodlings. Apparently, he was often doodling, and said, young man, you should you know, go to New York City and go to the um, Art Students League of New York and get formal training. And somehow Clifton did that. I mean, he had never left Pioneer Valley, and the thought of going to New York City in those days was a huge adventure, and perhaps the start of many adventures that he had. So he went to New York, got his education there, and came back to the farm. And he um, was writing, he was drawing, he was submitting articles to the Daily Hampshire Gazette, to the Springfield Republican. Hi, come on in into magazines, and they liked what they saw. They wanted longer articles. So he's writing all these articles, and they were buying them. And when he was 23 in 1888, he bought a camera. And he bought a camera to help him with his artwork so that he could take the image and then be able to work at home on it. But the publishers wanted to buy his photographs, too. So he started taking a lot more pictures. And it started to get a name for himself. Come on in. So here he is, this young man at 23 with his camera, starting to at the ask to illustrate books and starting to edit books. He started actually writing his own books. Um, in 1892, the first one came out, The New England Country. And before he passed, he wrote 125 books. He edited a lot of books. He um, illustrated a lot of books and did a lot of paintings and drawings and journals and articles, um, and we're so lucky to have his images. Um, then he was sent to Europe for three years in a row, 1895, 96, and 97, to get images there for books that were being illustrated. And when he went in 1896, he took his bride. Anna McQuestion was a neighbor. She had been teaching at the Hockenham Schoolhouse. He had known her most all of her life. And um, if we got somebody else coming in. Hi, Hi. No, that's fine. Um, so this hunt, this double does his honeymoon, this work trip to Europe. What an adventure for them. They came back to Hockenham. They came back to their home there and raised five children, including Captain Irving Johnson, another Hadley great. Um, Clifton was also very involved in Hadley. He was very involved at the First Congregational Church. He was on the school committee and um, did a lot of supporting. He was hi there, Ray. Hi, Harry. He was a big part of the Hadley um, 250 in 1909 and wrote this quarter, or edited the Quarter Millennial, which is filled with stories. So why we have so much of his work now is because the Johnson family generously donated thousands of items to the Jones Library in Amherst. And they also generously donated time and money to have so many of the images, thousands um, of the photographs digitized. And if you want to see them, if you want to see any of these that I'm going to show you again, or if you want to see more, you can go to digitalamherst.org and you'll see the Clifton Johnson collection. And it's really tremendous. And if you want to know more about Clifton, 
One of the Johnson members, Carl Johnson, wrote a really nice article about him on um, wikipedia.org. So those are two ways to easily get more information. Now, if you go to digitalamherst.org and you put in Hadley, you'll get 37 pages of images with about 14 per page that Clifton took, um, mostly between 1890 and 1930. And I'm not going to show you hundreds. <laughs> I'm going to just show you some of my favorites. And I've kind of broken them into categories. Um, I'm going to start with views that we no longer get to see. I'm sure this is a very familiar view. Um, sorry, I'm in your way, probably. The titles underneath the pictures are actually Irving's, um, Clifton's titles for the images. And here's the covered bridge that went along Hockenham Road to get to the center of town. It was built in 1840 and certainly was the main road to town when um, Clifton was alive. And then it burned in um, 1962. It was the last covered bridge in Hampson, Hampshire County. Nice views of it. The next one is a mill building. This is um, was on Bay Road. Mills were huge in Hadley in the 1800s. And you can still see the foundation of this as you go over the bridge right at the end of East Street on Bay Road, and especially when there are no leaves out, there the stone. But this is what it looked like. It ground grain. It even was an ice cream factory for a time. The next one I have for images you can no longer see are the ferries. The ferries were huge. They started in the 1660s in Hadley to get from Hadley to Northampton. And um, this one happens to be the Hockenham Ferry, which started in 1755 and went till 1918. Um, this is the getting both of these images are on the Northampton side with Mount Holyoke Range in the background. And there's Samuel Russell on top of his load of hay. <laughs> And then this one is a, a common image in a lot of ways. Um, the street's a little wider now on the common, but what we don't get to see are the stately elms. There's so many references to the stately elm trees that used to line so many streets in Hadley and certainly line the common. Um, but here they are in him, his image from a century ago. Now then, the next set of slides are slides that we can see. Um, they're familiar images, but they're through this lens from a century or more before. And here's the Porter Phelps Huntington House. And then we have the North Hadley Mill Pond, or Lake Warner as we know it today. He often put people in his photos, which I love. I think they give a certain sense of scale, but also make it just feel part of the community. Clifton Johnson loved um, the rural life. He loved everyday people and everyday activities. And he had what's described as a listener's ear. He could talk with people. And he wanted to record not only what they said, but how they said it. And I just marvel at him. I think that um, he just traveled around. He went from town to town. He'd stay in people's farmhouses that would put him up. He'd take these wonderful images of them doing their everyday life. And apparently he had amazing memory. He would um, talk to people during the day, then pull out his journal at night and write meticulous notes on what people said and how they said it. And in his books, mm -hmm. you just get the sense that you can no. hear the dialect and hear their phrasing. And it's, it's amazing. And he traveled, I mean, think about, he never learned to drive. Um, it was by boat and train and stagecoach and um, horse and buggy and a whole lot of walking. He, um, he went far beyond Hadley. We're so lucky we have so many images of Hadley. He went to every single continental state, all 48. He rode a series of highways and byways and traveled all through. He traveled um, to Europe and, and um, really just captured the areas that he was in. And, and I also am, admire his wife so much because she was raising five children and holding down the fort when he was gone, and he must have been gone for weeks at a time to be able to reach these places. So they, they were a good, good match together. Um, this next image is some of these we can still see. You've got the railroad bridge, which is now the bike path, and then the car bridge, and then there was a trolley bridge as well. So it used to be three bridges right there going over the river. Here's the Goodwin Library when it was fairly brand new in the um, St. John's Church. And again, somebody walking down, I think, just adds so much. 
The next one. That was the that was the Irish Church behind it. Mm -hmm. The St. John's, right? The, the and then the um, children by the Hadley Town Hall. And this one you may know because it was a very popular postcard. So you may have actually seen that postcard. Mm -hmm. I do have one here. Now, as I said, he really enjoyed the common people and common daily life. And there's a whole lot of pictures of chores. <laughs> and I'm just going to show a few. Here's um, the hungry hen, hens, and in the sheep pasture. I'm sorry. I know I'm in your way here. Yes, I'm going to see. Fanmu, does that help? Yeah. Is that, that yeah, better? Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't um, know if that makes no, it worse fine. for you. Cane in the field, the Holyoke Range behind. Filling the um, farm ice house, They'd come down and get their slab of ice to bring back and stick under sawdust and it would last till June. The Hockenham Cemetery is up the hill. Here's a summer hayfield. Now Clifton was an artist, you can see in the lower corner he often, if he didn't like something, he often drew over it or he would um, add clouds or somehow, you know, change it. So that was common. I especially like this photo because it's our barn at the top of the hill. And there's been a few times when the barstows were haying when I, it, it's been the right time and I've run down the hill with my camera trying to get this <laughs> same shot with their modern day equipment. And drying clothes. Then there's leisure time. It wasn't all chores. So you have the optimist. This is Margaret Johnson, um, his daughter with Rachel Diamond. I love the title, The Optimist. Skaters. And this title, The Piper and the Purr. <laughs> there's his daughter, Margaret, again. Now, he really liked schools. He spent a lot of time visiting schools all throughout the area, and he's written four books on schools. In one of them, the country school, the Riverbend School. He often made things anonymous, um, but the Riverbend School is the Hockenham Schoolhouse, so there's a lot of pictures in there of it. Here is, this is probably from 1895 or so, and this is his soon-to-be wife, um, Anna Johnson, and then Anna McQuestion, rather. Is that the little building that's still there? It is. Oh, yeah. Wow. And it still looks very much like the schoolhouse did yeah, in 1930. So it's, it's a good stop. Um, and then the children there in 1895. And here's the children with a different teacher, of course, in about 1930. And a lot of these children are children of the people you just saw in the last picture. And my husband's father is one of them. Mm -hmm. And then this one I love, why they were late for school. <laughs> this was my husband's grandfather and his brother. So. <laughs> now this one I wonder if anybody recognizes. Does anyone recognize this building? I'll give you a hint on the next page. It was built in 1782 and it was moved about two miles. They had to cut down trees and move telephone poles and negotiate with the railroad. It's the Farm Museum. The Farm Museum. So there's a nice, there it is today. <laughs> or there it was in 1930. Very similar to how it was today. So Clifton Johnson was the oldest of, five, of four. And one of his brothers, um, Henry, also did the same. He was three years younger than Clifton, and when he was 15, he dropped out of school also to go work at the bookstore to raise um, funds to help pay the family mortgage. And Henry really liked a bookstore. And when Henry was about um, 24 or so, and, and um, Clifton was about 27, Henry went to Clifton and said, would you help me buy a book a store in downtown Springfield, right on the main street. Mm -hmm. It's about 800 square feet. It was a novelty shop. And would you be my silent partner? Well, by now, Clifton had some money. He had been writing these, editing these books and doing all these writing and selling things. And so he became the silent partner. And it, it became a multi-generational business. And it became the beloved Johnson Bookstore. 
um, down in Springfield. So again, um, Clifton was huge in, in helping to start that, with, and Henry's the one that really made it grow so much with their, their next generations. So Henry liked to travel around, fast forward about 30 years, and he, was, he loved to bargain, and he loved rural life also, and he wanted to find antique books, and they, they had an antique book section because Henry kept coming back with these old books in the bookstore. But he didn't just stop at books. He, kept, he couldn't pass by a farm implement. If it was rusty and rotting, and he, he just could he bargained for it. And I'm not sure many people in the 1920s were collecting <laughs> old farm implements. So as he went around, he kept coming back with carts full of these um, various items. And he started filling up his garage, and then Clifton's barn and garage, and then Clifton's son, Roger, who worked at the bookstore with Henry, his barn. And the family was like, we have to do something. And they said, what about a museum? And Clifton was very involved in the church, and the church on the spot where the farm museum had their horse barns. Well, nobody was coming to church anymore in a horse, so they really didn't need those barns anymore. So Clifton talked the church into selling that space to them, and um, then Clifton called Bishop Huntington, who he knew, who was in Boston, and said, can we, we want an old looking barn. Can we copy the design of your barn? And you saw the condition of that barn. <laughs> Can we copy your barn and um, use that as a blueprint for our, our museum? And, and Bishop Huntington said, sure. And then the next day, Bishop Huntington called back and said, you know, I really don't need that barn. If you can take it, it's yours. So that's how the Porter Phelps Huntington Barn, Huntington Barn, ended up as the farm museum in the center of town. So the last high welcome. The last category I have is floods, because it's hard to talk about Hadley and not think about images of floods. Um, so here he, he got flood, pictures of floods from 1927 and 1895. Here is um, Westry underwater um, along the stately elms. And then the next one is the Fort Meadow after an ice um, flood. And here's the road here. You can see the guardrail. And then the road would have been cleared so that horse is on the clear road, we hope. And then all the ice in the field there. This is past Mitch's Marina over here. And again, by having the people in there, he just really puts it, puts it in perspective. But that's, that's quite a picture. And then so many buildings, outbuildings, in Hadley are built from river trash <laughs> that was hauled out of the river at the various floods, and it must have been a huge chore, um, but here they are. And then here's the Hockenham Schoolhouse after the flood in 1895 with Anna McQuestin, the teacher, in the doorway, and the students get into school however they can, by boat or by walking if they're able. <laughs> so there's just a, a little um, taste of, of his images. And again, the digitalamherst.org is a great place if you want to see more. Um, one thing, I, how I wanted to end it is, um, his daughter Margaret came back to live in Hadley um, in her later years. And, and when I was a younger bride in Hockenham and, and down the street, I'd love to go down and have tea with her and listen to her stories. And, and one image that has really stayed with me is um, the family, Clifton and Anna, and the five children around the table. And he was well-known, and well-known people would go out of their way to come to Hadley and have dinner with them. Hi, welcome. They'd come to Hadley to have dinner with them, and she talked about Mr. Goodyear from Goodyear Tire came. But the, the duo that really made me say, wow, was the thought of Thomas Edison and Henry Ford sitting at their dinner table in Hadley. What a conversation it must have been. <laughs> um, I have some books up here you're welcome to look at. And if he's not, don't mind me putting on the spot. It's nice to have Clifton's great-great-grandson join us today, too. <laughs> so thank you for being here. And I'll be glad if you have any questions, I, I can certainly try to answer them as well. Who was Hadley named after? <laughs> Is there a Hadley, England? There is. There's a Hadley, England that um, 
Oh, it's spelled H A D L E I G H. Correct. Uh, yeah, it was a town. It was a town in England that it, it was named after. That some of the settlers were from or near from. Yeah, the the I think the first minister was from there. John Russell. Yeah. There's a Hadley in the uh, Hatfield, Minnesota, too. Huh. Uh -huh. Right next to each other. That's funny. Do you, Mary, do you know if he staged his photographs or they they are? Uh, so that huge camera he had yeah. took a couple minutes to take a photo at the very beginning. So it was much easier to take a landscape than, say, an animal <laughs> or right, a right. child. But then the celluloid cameras came out. And they were just coming out, I think, when he bought that. But they so that would have made them, you know, film um, much lighter, which would have been easier. But I think it still took a while. In fact, I think Rick's dad talked about you know having to stand very still. Um, but, and certainly some of those, a lot of the images in the books are, his children are the um, models, and he would stage, you know, what they were doing to some extent. Um, but he also loved just capturing people's everyday lives. Um, but I think he would, you know, certainly say, can I, and he, you know, people would let him be, take pictures of him inside their home at their table. And he, you know, he had such a way about him that they felt very comfortable and they talked with him. Um, so there's certainly it was nothing was a quick snap I'm sure but um, it, it did take a while. A lot of the old family portraits, the children's faces are blurred. Okay. You see often. Yes. Especially the babies. You can't tell a baby to sit still. Right. So the face is moving. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Mary, did you mention that he was instrumental in the fire museum getting? I, I did. A, I did quite a bit on that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I ask you, did they, remember they used to have a bicycle on a post by the yard, and they used to have a bicycle collection in Yes. There. So that was Clifton's son, Roger, had the barn there. Now, is that the one that... Was? With a flood sign. Okay, because the big white house was the main, main one over here, right? Um, the That's one with the flood sign was his son, Roger's. Now Clifton was on the riverside. All right, because one of them now had a, did a whole, I remember my father used to, um, geographic, geog uh, don't mind me, I have, but they uh, they had people that traveled all over the earth, and they, even like from the natives in India and everything, were in, on the right side in one of the houses, and they had a big article in the National Geographic one year. That was Cat, that was his son Irving Johnson. So he did. He sailed around his... the world seven times. times. Yeah. Okay. Yep. In the Yankee. You're yeah. right. Absolutely. That was his son who also <laughs> lived in the family homestead oh. after Clifton. Uh, I can remember going to the Johnsons bookstore down Springfield because my mother was wonderful. from Springfield. So yeah. I would stop in there in the antique section looking for a Clifton Johnson book or an Irving Johnson book. So excited. Now you go on eBay and they're much easier to get, but there I'd be searching for them and so glad when I found one. But it was a beautiful bookstore. Yeah. It has clothes though, right? It has yeah. clothes. Yeah. 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 Sign of the They had a lot besides books. They had geographical oh. maps, model, plastic models, uh, model railroads. They, were they had the used bookstore in the back they across the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had art supplies in that building. No cards and yeah. Yeah. Was it something to go to Springfield when you lived here? Well, Henry would have lived down there. He, when he yeah. you know, when he opened it up he got a house down there. But Clifton apparently on Tuesdays and Fridays when he was in town, he never drove, so Roger he'd drive down with his son Roger and um, spend the day at the at the bookstore. And um, Maybe you should know this, but is he buried up at Hockenham with all the other Johnsons? Clifton is, yes. Clifton? Yes. Yeah. Is that the stone that has the Johnson's bookstore logo on it? You know, it's very decorated. I think, I think you're probably right. Yeah. Um, Irving's has the, the sailboat, the ship. Um, yeah. I, I think it is very decorative. Have to look. Any other any other thoughts or questions? Well, there's lots of delicious food out there, and it's beautiful. It's nice to celebrate this beautiful building. But feel free to look through any of the books if you're interested too. There's a lot of illustrations, and the Historic Hampshire um, County book has 
it was written before the Quabbin, so it's got Greenwich and Prescott and yeah. all those towns and Field as if they're lot vibrant going towns. So that's there that's were four kind of that dissolved. Enfield, Dana, Prescott, and Greenwich. Yeah. yeah. And parts of Pelham. There's a book uh, about Amherst and Hadley, a paperback. It's a series. In it, they have a picture of Irving Johnson doing a headstand on a telephone pole. On Hockenham. Yes. Is there a book on Johnson who was a uh, very well known sailor? There is. He, Irving Johnson actually wrote several books about his sailing adventure, and he wrote several books himself describing their trip. And um, I, I don't want to go on and on, but we, we, quite a few years ago, managed to get down to the Galapagos. And you're going right over the equator, there's this island that has this massive cliff. And up there was like, it looks like graffiti from today, but back then that's what ships did. There was this big Yankee painted on the side of this cliff in the Galapagos. And that's from their Captain Irving Johnson's boat. That's what you did when you got to this Tower <laughs> Island was write your name. So I, I informed the boat that it was not the Yankee baseball team, that it was <laughs> the sailor from Hadley, Massachusetts. <laughs> Do you know if the Hadley Library has any of these? They don't. Yeah, they're, they're working on it. Yeah, they, they don't. They have, uh, we have all the Clifton the, uh, Clarence Hawks books. Oh, good. But uh, very good. I have not found any of the Clifton Johnson books, so it's on our list of things to get. It's, there, you have to go through eBay. And even the, the Historical Society has one, has the Hampshire County one, so okay. I don't know why they're so rare here in town. This is my favorite, A Book of Country Clouds and Sunshine. And it's just local stories. I even have um, a list in the front here of all the shots I found that were in Hadley and what page they're on. But um, it's a fabulous book, and it's just local stories of everyday life. And it's, you know, that's, I think, the ones I've read, are, that's one of my favorites. But the Farmer's Boy and what they say in New England, and he really, he really, he did this for other parts of the country too, but we're so lucky to have. And, you know, this book here, for those of us um, planning the Hadley 350th, this was so helpful because it was really outlined what they did for the Hadley 250th. And there's a whole poem in here about the stately elms <laughs> in Hadley that we don't get to see anymore. Do you remember when there was a replica built up in California and the, the owners um, uh, invited elect out? Yes. Yeah. For the christening? Alex, you may know more about that, but they, they had named them, I think, Exe and Irving or something, the two ships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Mary, where they had the bicycles, did they also have a museum for Kristen Johnson? So, I mean, I know, Irving Johnson's? Irving Johnson and his farm used to have a museum. They, I mean, a lot from the South Pacific, and they, Irving took Rick and I through that. Again, we were quite young, and um, took us through and showed us everything, and he had, you know, the helm from the Yankee, he had all these amazing artifacts from all these South Pacific Islands, and I remember one he had was his headband, and it was dried beetles, like big beetles, and apparently whatever island it was from, that was what you would give your, your bride or beloved is this, <laughs> but they wouldn't have been dead at the time, and they just, I guess, I don't know what, but that, that sort of, it was not something I wanted to try on, <laughs> but it was, it was fabulous, and that, um, and then the bicycles, Walter, you've ridden the bicycles there, right, and maybe Betty, yeah. yep, the high rollers, um, Roger had a whole collection of them. I, I ran, ran across a picture in the Historical Society of Don Shipman. And one of his daughters riding him on those things. Oh, uh, my goodness. And the, the Johns, Carl Johnson, I think it was, some of the Johnsons brought four or five of them for the parade for the Hadley 350th in 2009. And his, his daughters rode them, which was really fun. And they brought, they had a 1902 or 1904 Knox oh, wow. that... 1901. Okay, 1901. They're car people. <laughs> 1901 Ford Knox that they brought and ran in the had in the parade as well. That used to be down there. So but didn't Irving and elect to take college students on their voyages? They took. They were. That's what started this. They. Um, there's a lot of 
um, sailors today that take novice crews out. Um, there's the Court Kramer out of Canada, does 18-month um, trips around the world. And when Exi passed, the captain of that Corth Kramer from Canada came down and he said, I never met her, but I had to come because because of them, I get to do what I do. They're the ones that first started taking, inex they were college age, inexperienced sailors. They'd go around for 18 months and apparently he'd leave, Irving would, Captain Johnson would leave from Gloucester and he'd say, I'll be back in 18 months. In 18 months to the day, there they would be. <laughs> I heard somewhere, I don't know if you told me, Mary, that he was, he worked for the Navy. I think mean, he was a comm commodore or commander or something. But he did some kind of se secret stuff in the Pacific. Uh, During know, World War II. Yeah, or in, even before World War II. Well, they wanted him because he knew the islands. Yeah. Right. The, and he talked to somebody and they said, don't say yes unless they make you this certain rank, or you, you know. And so they made him this, he said, I won't do it unless you make me whatever rank it was. Think, yeah. And um, Alex. And he used to lead dive missions also to like recover Japanese intelligence in the Pacific. And there are great pictures of him in like really old school scuba diving equipment. And he's written incredible stories about like getting stuck in ships like deep under sea and his tube of air getting like trapped in, in a door and things like that. Well, it must be one of the first to see our Navy SEALs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe well. they actually sailed out of New Bedford. Out of New Bedford, okay. And, and he would give his day he was going to return at the time. He, He'd do it within an hour. He'd wow. scale back in the harbor within an hour. I just picture him offshore saying, not yet, not yet. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it is amazing when you think. And they would, um, down in some of those islands in the Galapagos, they would be the ship. And they, So every three years, so they'd have a year and a half around the world and then a year and a half at home in Hakanam to prep. And, and also they during those summers when they were here, they'd take Girl Scouts out on shorter trips. Um, but some of those islands, every three years, they would come by, and that was the only people that some of these islands saw. And they'd take whatever mail each way, and things like sewing needles they would take, and people were so grateful for them. But that was, you know, they would count on them coming, and, and they would be there. Um, but thank you, Walter. Yeah, it's quite a quite amazing thing. Um, Are there any books on the hotel that used to exist up on the mountain there? There are. There's some wonderful books. Uh, there's some on, on Mount Holyoke or, or Mount Tom. Mount Holyoke. Mount Holyoke? Yes. The yeah. Summit House. The Summit House. There are some really nice books. Maybe the library has yeah, some of do. those. Do, do. Yeah, the library has some. Yeah, we're, we're blessed with lots of history in Hadley. And A good part of the building went down in a hurricane what, 38 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're lucky the rest is there, that's for sure. Good. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, anything else? Well,